Please note that this video has sexual health content. Let's look at the different parts of the male reproductive system and see how it works. So let's start with the parts that we can visibly see in our body. So one of the part is this skin, pouch of skin that hangs from our lower abdomen. We call this the scrotum. Scrotum. Like I said, it's a pouch of skin hanging from the lower bottom, so it must be protecting something inside of it, right? What is it protecting? We'll come to that in a second. But another part which we can easily see, which is visible to us, is the penis. Now let's go to the organs or the parts that is inside our body, which we cannot see. So one of the parts that you might already know about is our urinary bladder. So this is our bladder, the bladder. And you might know that this is where the urine gets filled up. And eventually when the bladder is full, the urine passes through a pipe which enters into the penis and then you urinate it outside. And this particular pipe is what we call the urethra. This is the urethra. And that's going to be important for us, okay? Now let's come back to this scrotum. What is inside of it? Well, the scrotum protects an important organ called the testes. So this is the testis. You can also call it testicle. And we have two of them, so the plural would be testes with an E. T-E-S-T-E-S -E -E would be the plural, testes. Testis would be the singular. And so what does testes do? Well, the primary job of testes is to make sperm cells. And that's why we call it the gonad. Gonads are the one that, ones that create gametes. So in males, the gametes are called sperm. So testis is the gonad, which creates sperms. Creates sperms. Now you might also remember that testis secretes a very important sex hormone called the testosterone during our puberty. It is because of testosterone that we see physical changes during puberty in males, like your beard grows and uh, your voice becomes very, your voice cracks and gets a little deeper. And we also see behavioral changes, like we start to get more aggressive. All of that happens due to testosterone. That's one of the things that causes sexual maturity in males. But another thing that testosterone don't testosterone does is that, again, it regulates the creation of the sperms inside the testes. And a curious question could be, why is the scrotum hanging down, carrying the testis almost outside of our body? Well, there is a reason for that. You see, it turns out that the creation of the sperms requires a little cooler temperature than our body, about two degrees Celsius cooler. So this requires cool temperatures, all right? And it's for that reason the scrotum hangs below the lower abdomen so it so the testis can be out slightly outside our main body and because of that its temperature will be lower so the scrotum protects the testis and it also helps regulate temperature it also helps keep it cool by hanging below the abdomen all right once these sperms are created they move towards another organ called Another organ on top of the testis, this is called the epididymus. <laughs> All right, a little hard to spell and pronounce over there. But anyways, once the sperm reach over there, they start growing and maturing over there. Just like how our bodies grow and mature, the sperms also need to grow and mature. It's inside this organ that they grow and mature. So let me write that over here, the sperms G grow and mature, so mature sperms are sitting over there. Sperms sit over there. Now you don't have to remember this name, so I'm just gonna put a strike on this. For our syllabus, we don't need to remember the name, but the mature sperms are sitting over there. All right, now what happens to these sperms now? Well, if the penis gets stimulated, then these sperms will get propelled into a tube, as we will see in a second and eventually it'll come out of the penis. 
But if there is no stimulation for quite a while, then the sperms basically get reabsorbed by the body and then the whole process continues. This ensures that we don't have any old stock over here. We will always have fresh new stock of mature sperms waiting to come out of the penis. All right, so what's gonna happen if this penis gets stimulated? Well, as the penis gets stimulated, like we said, the sperms are gonna get propelled from the epididymis into yet another organ, a tube-like structure called the vas deferens. So let me write that. So it gets propelled, the sperms, the mature sperms, goes into another tube called the vas deferens. And where does the sperms go after that? Well, the vas deferens takes the sperms and empties it into yet another duct, as you can see over here, and then finally the sperms will enter into the urethra, the same pipe through which the urine moves out, the same urethra, and then eventually the sperms can come out of the penis. Now you might have a small curious question, why does the vas deferens empty the sperm into this duct and then it goes into the urethra. Why not directly into the urethra? I'll answer that in a second. But here's one question for us now. The sperms, once they exit the male body, they have to survive for quite a long time in the female reproductive system. They require energy because they need to move, they require nutrition, and they also need some help in moving. So if the sperms directly come out, most of these things cannot happen and the sperms may not be able to survive. So, to help the sperm survive outside our body, to give it nutrition, to give it energy, along with the sperms, some extra secretions are needed. And that, those secretions are done by accessory glands. I'll tell the names of these glands in a second, but it's these glands that secrete some fluids into this particular duct and also into the urethra, which mix with the sperm and provides the sperm with all the nutrition and the energy and gives it motility, helps in, in moving. And so these are what we call the, sec the accessory glands which produce that secretion. And finally, the mixture, the sperm and the, sperm and the, the fluid mixture, which eventually comes out of the urethra, so let's say this is that mixture. This now is what we call the semen. This is what we call the semen. So the semen contains the sperms and it contains all the secretions plus the secretions from the accessory glands. All right, let's name the glands. Turns out that most of the secretions of the semen is done by this particular gland, which is behind the bladder. And so it's, this is called the seminal vesicle. Seminal vesicle. And the gland below over here also helps in the secretions. And this is called the prostate gland. Again, you may have heard of this gland, prostate. And now this answers why we have this tiny little duct over here. So the vas deferens empties the sperms into the duct. These glands empty their secretions into the duct. And this is where most of the semen is formed. And this tiny bulb-like structure is the third gland which also adds its secretion to the semen. And since it's a bulb-like structure, it's connected to urethra, it's called the bulbo-urethra gland. But I'm not gonna write that because we again don't need to remember that. It also has another important job. Before the semen reaches over here, it sends out a secretion, which is a little alkaline, which cleans up this passage if there is any urine over there, because urine is acidic, right? And if the semen reaches over there, where the urine is present, the urine, the acidic urine might kill the sperms, and that's bad. So it just cleans up. So you first cleans it up and sends it out, and then the sperm comes out of the penis. And of course, at this point, the penis might be erect and stiff, which will help it to eject that semen out of the body with a very high speed. And then the semen can enter the vagina and the sperms will start their new journey in search of an egg to fertilize. Again, something we'll talk about in the future videos. And this particular act of expelling the semen out from the penis is what we call ejaculation. 
And in every ejaculation, the semen might contain not thousands, but millions of sperms. That's because the conditions in the female reproductive parts are very harsh, and so most of these sperms die. The unhealthy ones, the ones which are not fit to survive, they just die out. This is to ensure that only the healthiest of the healthiest of the healthiest sperm can survive and go and fertilize with the egg. And finally, if you're thinking about what the sperm looks like, here is a schematic of the sperm. The sperm is a cell. You can see the head, which contains the nucleus, which has the genetic material. Basically, it's this genetic material which is supposed to go into the egg after fertilization. It has a tail, which helps it swim, it helps it move, we can say, inside the vagina and inside the uterus. And, and it requires energy for that, and it's for that reason the body of the sperm contains mitochondria. You might know mitochondria is the powerhouse. So this is basically what a sperm, a human sperm looks like. All right, that's pretty much it. Let's quickly go ahead and summarize what we learned. So the testis is the male gonad, which is responsible for creating the sperms. It is protected by the scrotum, which is the pouch of skin, which hangs below the abdomen. This also ensures the low temperature needed for the testis to create the sperms. The young sperms now move to the epididymis. That's where they will mature and sit for a while. And then if the penis gets stimulated, these sperms will get propelled into the vas deferens. The vas deferens empties the sperms into this tiny little duct, and these accessory glands also add in their secretions, basically the seminal vesicle and the prostate gland mainly, and these secretions help the sperm get their nutrients, get their energy, and help them in motility. And now this forms the semen, the semen eventually comes out of the urethra from the erect penis and gets thrown out with a great speed. And these sperm contains a head which has the genetic material, it has a body which has the mitochondria, and it has a tail which helps it move.